Welcome to the Unbalanced Force Model Glow Script tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to give you some quick tips for how to use forces to cause your object to accelerate. And that's building on top of the previous non uniform motion model we built uh, two units ago. And one thing to realize is that as we start um, learning more and more about Glow Script and we start learning more and more about the physics also, uh, we're going to expect that you're able to start figuring out more things on yourself. So this video is a little less explicit than some of the other videos. So you're going to have to think um, and kind of figure out and problem solve uh, how do you get this thing to accomplish what you're trying to do. And I'll, I'll show you some things, but some things you're going to have to figure out yourself as well. Okay, so let's get started. First thing, as you can see, you want to start at your non-uniform most motion glow script uh, program. Please make sure that's this is in your public folder again so that uh, we are able to open and view and grade it. And first thing I'd recommend is just running your program, taking a look at what it looks like again. And so this is our, our starting point. We have the object is speeding up. And right now we're accomplishing that by just putting in an acceleration and say you're going to accelerate at that much. But now we're going to try to use forces to cause that acceleration. So one thing that's worth noting is you can define any variable that you want. So for example, mass or force or whatever. Um, and so I'm going to add in a mass. OK, so at this point, you should have defined your mass. And it's m is equal to 5 because it's a scalar and it doesn't have direction. The next thing that you should think about doing is adding two or more forces that will act on the object. And you should think carefully when you define force, is it a scalar like mass or is it a vector? If it's a vector, then you want to make sure you write it in vector notation and you tell it, you know, vector and then give it a three dimensional size. And so think carefully, go ahead and add at least two forces. This is a part I'm not going to show you how to do it, but I think that you can figure it out. I've purposely left my force definitions off the screen, so you can't just straight copy it. But before going farther, you should have that. And once you have it, uh, one thing that the computer is very good at is doing any kind of calculations that you want it to do. And so for example, if we're doing Newton's second law, one thing that we would want to figure out is the net force. And so let's define that. And I'm just going to say, add up first force, I call my first force force one, and the second force force two, and that will be the net force. Additionally, we want to have the acceleration be caused by the forces and the masses. And although you could uh, write that statement before the while loop, one thing that's kind of neat is if you write it inside the while loop, then if for some reason, if the force is changed, your acceleration will change consequently which usually won't happen in this class, but sometimes in a more complicated model that might be the case. So I would recommend in the while loop putting some kind of a statement where you say acceleration equals, then again, I'm going to leave it to you to figure out, um, according to Newton's second law, what is the acceleration equal to and what should the computer be calculating? Stop, take a second, and try to figure that out. At this point, you should have your acceleration defined so that it depends on the force and the mass, and that should be somewhere in the while loop. So essentially, this a equals vector up here, that's just the initial acceleration, but then it keeps recalculating the acceleration um, based on the forces while the uh, object is moving or the loop is running. So anyways, let's go ahead and check and see if your object is accelerating. It should be some kind of a different acceleration than it was before. And I have that acceleration is below, but I've purposely hidden it for right now. Okay, so you can see that my object's moving. It's slowing down. It's different than it was before. Let's go on to the next step. So first thing, uh, one thing that we're trying to add is a trail so that you can see the trajectory or the path of the object. So first we need to initiate that. Okay, so I said the name of my object was ball, and I said ball.trail, since so trail is like a property of the object. 
and it's a curve, and I want to set the color equal to the ball's color. So let's run that and see if it doesn't give me any errors. So that looks fine. Obviously, the, there, you don't actually see any trail, and that's because I'm not updating it in the loop yet. And so to update in the loop, it's a pretty simple statement. So we're updating the ball's trail, and we're, we're appending it or changing it to be always equal to the position of the ball. So let's run it again and see if that looks OK. OK, so you can see now it's making a trail. It's, this one is pretty straightforward. Uh, it will get more interesting over time. But key idea is before you submit this, you want to make sure that you have at least two forces that are acting on the object. You want to have define the mass. Um, and one thing that's very important is that you want to make sure that the initial velocity and the net force acting on the object are in opposite directions. So I'm not going to say how to do that, but please think carefully. How would you make sure the initial velocity and the net force are in opposite directions? And what kind of motion should we expect if that's the case? So uh, once you've done all these things, uh, you're good to go. You don't need to submit any more links. We'll just use the same link as we used before. Good luck and thanks for watching.